Hi there. Welcome to The Preventable, the podcast giving you a seat at the table with conversations about the intersection of alcohol, drugs, and mental health in everyday lives. Take a seat and join us. Welcome to The Preventable. With me today is founder of Sands Bar, Chris Marshall. Thank you very much, Chris, for joining. Thank you for having me on, Nicole. So full disclosure, this is our first virtual podcast. And when we decided to try this, we said, oh, who is a friend who's going to be very patient with us, who feels like an extension of us, but doesn't live in our neck of the woods? And we immediately thought, Chris Marshall. So thank you very much for agreeing to to be our, our person for this. I am glad to do it. I think it's going to be really exciting and I hope it expands your, your, you know, interviewers and people you talk to. Awesome. We hope so too. So walk me back to the founding of Sands Bar. We've had Annie on to talk about Sands Bar St. Louis. um, And we mentioned obviously you and the work that you've done, but talk to me about you as a person and that moment where you were like, this is it. Hmm. So I uh, stopped drinking when I was 23 years old in 2007. I just celebrated 15 years of alcohol freedom. Congratulations. Thank you. Uh, and as part of my recovery journey, I decided to go into counseling. So I became a licensed counselor. And through my work as a counselor, I encountered hundreds of people who were adults who were thriving, had a good jobs, had great education and otherwise great lives, but they just struggled with alcohol. And as I would talk to these folks, they would say the same again. They just felt like they needed a place to go that felt like it was fun and they could bring their people who didn't drink, that they wanted a space that felt equitable. And I heard that so many times that I just decided that it was worth it me leaving the clinical world to go build this bar called Sam. Now, it's actually a brick and mortar in Austin, correct? Correct. Yeah. So in 2018, after doing a series of pop-ups, I found this great space in East Austin, and we've been there ever since. And it's been really cool to see people come into the space, return to the space, understand that this is a space that's just for them, right? This, this, environment is about connecting. It's about growing together as a community. I know that you just uh, were at South by Southwest, right? And um, that in a lot of respects is sort of where you got your biggest um, like uh, reputation, notoriety, I guess, at the beginning, right? And so it's always sort of felt like home for you. Can you talk a little bit about South by Southwest? Yeah. So aside from living here in Austin, which is like home court advantage. Yes. <laughs> um, I started off in 2018 uh, doing a, something that I called Sober South by because I, I recognized there was an opportunity where people come to this to Austin. They converge on this city and it's the most incredible experience. If you've not been to South by Southwest, I encourage you to join because the whole world literally comes to this city and there is free alcohol, free food, free everything, but there's not a lot of alcohol-free opportunities. At least there wasn't in 2018. Right, right. Um, And so I decided to just offer this experience. Uh, A couple years before that, someone had driven drunk down the road and and killed some folks uh, down on the road. I remember that. That was crazy hearing about that. Yeah. And I, I just wanted to do something good. And so I started Sober South by in 2018, uh, came back in 2019, but bigger and better. And then, of course, COVID. But we were able to have this great experience uh, this past weekend during South by. And it was great to see that not only was my event happening, but there were other events that were official South by Southwest offerings. That's just I couldn't believe that if you would have told me that 10 years ago, I just would not have believed that that was even a possibility. That is so cool that like the movement that you've started is really like it's catching on like wildfire. And the the AF, alcohol free, ZP, whatever you want to call it, um, that movement in and of itself is really it's taken off. Right. And and I think something that we sort of bristle at is the idea that it's a trend. 
Um, mm. And there's nothing there's nothing trendy about it. It's we we like to say it's a movement. So um, can you talk a little bit about the growth you've seen in the marketplace and in the um, I guess even the vernacular uh, uh, since you started? Yeah. So unintentionally. I did not set out to start a movement or anything like that. I saw a need that was very personal to me. I had friends who died, went back and used substances that were harmful to them. I had no intentions of being a leader or starting a movement. It just sort of happened. And, and what's great about it, in my view, is that it's not just me. It's so many other people across the country and across the world, frankly, who are doing remarkable work. And I'm just one of those many people. Um, over the past even two years, we've seen an amazing explosion in non-alcoholic beverages and the culture that goes around non-alcoholic beverages. I think right. it's so cool to have great drinks, but it's really a, what's around the drink that makes it incredible. And we've seen communities spring up. We've seen meetups um, develop. We've seen all these wonderful uh, con concoctions of people just sort of like blending together like a perfect drink, you know, just coming together, shaking th things up and mixing together to create this culture that is the alcohol free movement. So were you a bartender in a past life? Maybe in a past life. But oh, not, okay. in this one. <laughs> not in this one. I, I had no bartending experience before I started Sands Bar. And that's one thing that I have enjoyed is to, to grow my bartending acumen as things have gone on. When I started in 2017, there was literally no alcohol free spirits on the market. And so my drinks were really rudimentary because I didn't have much to offer. I, I couldn't really offer a, a real elevated complex cocktail. Um, and what we see now are so many other botanicals and that's the most interest to me, like the botanicals that aren't mimicking spirits, but they're yeah, we had Brad uh, from heirloom on and he was, he taught me the difference between like a shrub and a syrup and a botanical. And I, I had no idea, but I agree that it's fascinating, right? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I mean, it's, it's, amazing and it's only getting started i know that to be true i know that we're only at the beginning stages of what will be the next 15 to 20 years of major growth and expansion in the category and so uh, as one way to really get a word out and and to create little um i guess just um pockets everywhere this is uh you're embarking on your second u.s tour right yeah so 2019, I decided that I was going to help this movement grow a little faster. <laughs> I think that if it would have just been word of mouth, it would have taken a lot longer. And most importantly, I don't believe in holding all the chips. I believe like real leadership is empowering others. It's not hoarding it for yourself. It's not making you the most important person. And so to empower other cities, I decided to embark on a tour. Mind you, I've never flown for business ever. So it was just that in and of itself was a learning experience. But to fly across the country and to host events, my my whole thinking behind that was offering people an opportunity to find fun and connection in their city. So I have these events. Um, in 2019, I went from Anchorage, Alaska to New York City and all points in between, came to St. Louis, and I had these amazing experiences. And I think people walked away from those experiences feeling inspired. So in that way, the mission's accomplished. So that's the same thing I'm doing this year with this tour, 15 different markets. And we're not just targeting the big cities. Yes, we're going to go New York, LA, Chicago, uh, but we're also going to go small. We're going to go Reno. Uh, we're going to go to St. Louis. We're going to go to some other markets that don't get a lot of press all the time. It's another one of those smaller markets by comparison. And I hope next year we can go even smaller. I like to to go to Biloxi, Mississippi. I like to go to Fayetteville, Arkansas. I like to go to, you know, Duluth, Minnesota. I want to, I want to find smaller markets because I feel like this becomes a movement and not a trend when the average person can find themselves within it. Right. And that is what this tour is about. It's not about uh, racking up a bunch of air miles, which I totally will. And it's not even about the drinks because the drinks are great, but I'm not, I'm not here to sell drinks. I really am here to build community and build connection. That's what this tour is all about. So uh, if you if you look up my, my tour schedule, you find you know a city near you, it's worth the trip to make it because it is about becoming part of this very 
exciting and robust movement. Well, so you, you've you mentioned, um, and I hope it's okay that I'm picking up on this, but you've mentioned equity and really finding yourself in this space. And as somebody who knows you personally, but also follows your social, um, I was struck by not a different path, but uh, maybe a deeper path that you took in 2020 and now into 2021, really about what it means to be a man of color who is in this space that is also part of the wellness space, which has definitely been whitewashed, um, and what community looks like in all of these spaces, right? And and what it looks like for you specifically as a man of color and how can you support other people of color who are trying to enter and be comfortable in your own skin and in this alcohol-free community. So I've been just really impressed by that. Um, not that it's about me at all, but I'm just, wa- I've been watching you and, and really learning a lot. I'm wondering if you could talk a little bit about why you um, wanted to go there and what you've maybe got out of some of those kinds of conversations that you have led and been part of. Hmm. I think 2020 obviously changed the world, right? The world. Yep. <laughs> there, I really do think that in history, in a hundred years, we'll look back and we'll say before 2020 and after 2020. I think that is just the dividing line of, of our lives now. And in 2020, I had to reconcile with a lot of things. You know, I had to reconcile with my identity as a black man uh, with the death of George Floyd. I had to identify, you know, or reconcile myself with the, as a husband, as a father. Um, suddenly, I went from you know flying all over the country and doing all these wonderful events to being home, and not having income for my family. I had to shut down the bar for a year it really put into perspective what it meant to be me. There's a lot of things people think I am. People people um, often project their greatest hopes and sometimes worst fears on me as a person. And I had to look inside and figure out what's true for me. And what's true for me is that I want to continue to inspire others. And I want to inspire others who may not see themselves in the wellness space, in this in the social media wellness landscape, right? Like they may just see um other people represented and not themselves. And I, I wanted to be more open about that. Like, yes, I I know you may see that I'm a black man, but I also want to say that I am a black man. <laughs> and I'm very proud to be a black man. Um and there's also room for everyone else. There's room for people of all colors, of all religions, of all sexual orientations. This is a space that everyone belongs to. And, and I just wanna, if you, in, in case you didn't get the formal invitation, <laughs> I wanna formally invite everyone to be a part of this. Um, this is still so new and the greatest so, the, sorry. This is still so new and the great so big the need is so great. <laughs> I knew what you meant. There you go. Um, so yeah, one more time. Um, this movement is so big, but the need the need for people to join this movement is even bigger. And we need everyone at the helm. We need everyone finding their space, everyone finding their voice. I know that it can be discouraging to see everyone sharing their story and you feel like your story is not significant or or your pop-up isn't, you know, making headlines like do it anyways because it will inspire someone else. And that's that's what I hope I convey as a leader, that this is about inspiring others, that our light illuminates others. I, uh, I really appreciate the transparency that you have, not just here, but I feel like every time you talk about your journey, about um, your hopes and dreams for Sandsbar, like people get a feel for the real Chris, you know, and, and I think that that is really important. You have had a lot of um, really cool opportunities. Is there probably like beyond your wildest dreams, right? Is there one moment that sticks out where you're like, okay, can somebody pinch me? Because this is really cool. 
I mean, besides this one, of course. I mean, naturally. I mean, this is this is this is. I mean, right. This is like pinnacle. But I mean, (laughs) when you really think of it, this is this this is so emblematic of what this journey has been. I mean, what was it? Three or four years ago, we were talking on my way from work, and uh, we were chatting about the possibilities of what Sands Bar could mean. And and now look at this. You know, Um, it really is. This is a a big moment. but Today's I think, show had to be pretty cool. I mean, that's cool. That's, that's cool. cool. That's cool. Yeah, I mean, don't get me wrong. Press is awesome. I love press. But to me, the biggest moment has been um, seeing my kids walk into Sands Bar and they not have they don't have to question whether they belong there. They know that they belong there. I love when they can sit up on the bar and like make us something to drink. And we're gonna pretend like we're we're judging one of like a baking show and they they have this. Oh little, yeah. Like, I like this, but a little too much pineapple. Like they, they have such a great time with it. Like that is my love. That is what I enjoy more than anything. And that's really the moments that I, I hold on to the most. Of course, um, having these events across the country has been great. I mean, it's been incredible to see people just taking a chance and putting themselves out there and being nervous and feeling those butterflies of going to a social experience sober. That's huge. And I don't ever for one second take that for granted. And so, yeah, I, it's hard to pick just one, but I, I would say the most impactful moments are the ones with my, where my kids, my wife, where they can just acknowledge that this is something that I've created. Like that, that's, that's, those are big moments. That's really cool. So you've mentioned the tour. That's obviously huge. I also know you enough to know you're an ideas guy. And sometimes the ideas, like, they happen and they take off. So is there anything that you can talk about that you'd like to talk about that's next, the, ne- the next chapter of Sands Bar? Oh, my gosh. So many. I mean, I'm just like, what, what, what am I tra- contractually obligated not I to know. Do? I know, right? I can't talk about that. I can't okay. talk about that either. Can't but I can talk that. about, I can talk about uh, just the rest of this tour. I, I can talk awesome. about that. Um Talk about Sands Bar Academy, which is a 10-week course yes. designed to help people um, achieve their dream of opening a non-alc business. Um, that is going on. The next semester of that starts in June. So if people are interested in you know, joining this movement and building their own alcohol-free business but don't have the money to get started, Sands Bar Academy is a beautiful way to do that. Um, but yeah, I got some other things that are happening that are pretty cool. So stay tuned, as they say, huh? Yeah. So if people want to find out about Sands Bar Academy or um, the tour, where would be the best place for them to go? Uh, so they can go to the sandsbar.com, the website, and all my information should be there. Um, I think it's pretty easy, easy to kind of navigate the website. But you can also email me at sandsbarinfo at gmail.com. If you have any questions about anything, if you're just like, oh, my gosh, how do I do this? How do I make this work? Just Just send me a message. And Instagram, you're pretty active on Instagram, I would say. What's your handle there? It's sans underscore bar. Sans underscore bar. Chris, thank you so much for pulling up a seat at our table, uh, dishing about kind of the origin story of Sans Bar. You know, we are so grateful for um, everything that we've been able to accomplish because of our association with you and everything we've learned from you. Um, I know Annie is a superstar and uh, I know that that um, the, the things that we've all learned from you along the way have been really instrumental. So thank you very much. Cannot wait to see you in St. Louis. Be in St. Louis. Excellent. So see you April 1st. If you like uh, this conversation with Chris, if you want more, please consider rating, reviewing, and subscribing to the Preventable Podcast. Thank you so much, Chris. Really appreciate you. Thank you, Nicole. See you soon.